Mumbai's 18.3 million residents dump out 1,700 million litres of sewage every day. The world's third largest city is getting crowded, going grey and losing her greens. Tucked away in the middle of this mayhem is an unexpected patch of green, the Indian Institute of Technology. Stroll down a wild trail and it isn't difficult to spot Professor Shankar lost in thought. For decades this chemical engineer has been intrigued by soil and water and how the two can be used to create a green technology that treats Mumbai sewage. He believes a solution lies in the mathematics of ecology and evolution. There is very little life in water. In terms of numbers, it looks like something like 1 to 5 billion tons. In comparison, in land, there's something like 650 billion tons of life, measured as carbon. So, this difference in numbers gives me some understanding of how life has evolved over the last 4 billion years. As the professor spent time contemplating about the evolution of life on land and water, it struck him that water cannot sustain dead matter. What happens in water is that there's a huge number of food chain that is working in water. Small organism being eaten by larger organism and larger organism being eaten by even larger organisms and so on. So that the largest organism, maybe a whale, they come to land and die, showing that there's practically no death in water. Well, death is common in soil. Why does land process the dead better than water? Why does it take a lot more effort to survive in water than land? The carbon cycle seemed to suggest that water isn't the most natural or the most efficient way of getting rid of dead organics. Yet it puzzled the professor that sanitary engineering methods all over the world use water for waste disposal. Sanitary engineering of the last hundred years are creating various difficulties for urban communities and therefore an alternative is required. Professor Shankar's field visits offered an alternative solution, soil biotechnology. If nature uses microbes in soil to process dead matter, soil biotechnology would mimic nature. It would use soil to purify water. We are looking at a technology which will consume very little energy, which will mesh or which integrate with the natural cycles of our environment. As soil biotechnology moved into its research and development phase, Professor Shankar and his team set out in search of the most critical ingredient, the right soil. They were looking for soil that would conduct water without getting choked. It also had to have the right mineral composition. Yes, it's got the right composition, okay. the right hardness. Apart from the right soil, this technology requires microbes in the soil to process waste organics. This is done by cultivating the carnivore of the soil, the geophagus worm. These worms feed on soil bacteria to maintain the microbe population of the soil. The team had cracked the technology on paper, but it took a while to artificially construct the biochemistry of nature in the lab. The main ingredients were almost in place. The challenge was now to continuously generate oxygen, reduce atmospheric carbon, create soil and purify the water. Our interest in soil biotechnology is to be able to construct an ecosystem which resembles nature. Six years later, the team was ready to construct the largest soil biotechnology plant. This would be for the Whirly Sewage Pumping Station of the Bombay Municipal Corporation that pumps out almost 800 million litres of sewage into the sea every day. It was going to be a massive transformation Professor Shankar's experiment had worked in a test tube in the lab, but would it work on 5,000 square metres of land? It was a risk the BMC was willing to take. 
soil biotechnology is a new concept that water is allowed to pass through different layers or filters. This is a unique plant. So far, nobody has constructed this type of plant. Seven months and 2.9 crore of rupees later, the pilot plant was ready to be tested. At first glance, it looked like a well-manicured garden. A closer look, and it was really 3,000 square meters of specially constructed ecology. Soil loaded with microbes, additives and plants. This was watered by pipes that spurted out 3 million litres of sewage every day. It took about 8 hours for the soil to filter all the sewage and fill up the storage tanks with purified water. Compared to other technologies, this plant is uh, producing very clean water. Plus, there are no foul odours and no sludge to be disposed of, which is still a problem with other technologies. While soil biotechnology may not produce drinking water, it does create an evergreen factory that treats the city's sewage to produce clean water for construction and agriculture. It is also price and space efficient. Maintenance in terms of power, labour and additives works out to three and a half rupees for every thousand litres of sewage. This is less than half of other technologies. Based on the success of this plant, we are going to have some more plants in Mumbai city at uh, Ghatkopar pumping station, Bandu pumping station, Warsaw pumping station. Professor Shankar believes this technology can change the face of sanitary engineering globally. As unlike other waste treatment methods, soil biotechnology saves energy, produces oxygen, and gets carbon credits. We are looking forward to setting up more and more such plants in different parts of the country as well as in different parts of the globe. And we are looking at our big users, which are the corporations of the cities of the world, as our major customers.